but really, really important is your role as head pedagogical coach in the school because it's shifting those classroom habits. It's the fact that your chemistry teacher is talking slightly differently now in the 23rd minute of an ordinary lesson on the inert gases than she did a month ago. Right? That's what's going to make the difference. And you're the hound dog who's kind of encouraging, observing, having staff meetings, getting, student, getting your colleagues to say, we're all going to try a little something for the next month. And then you give them time to have a go at it. But after three weeks or so, you or somebody will do your rounds and you'll go and sit in the back of that teacher's classroom. And at the end of the lesson, you'll say to them, this is not an appraisal lesson, this is a pedagogical coach lesson. You'll say to them, now just unpick that for me. What, what was the split screen element in that lesson? How have your displays changed over the last month so that it now this room visually represents inquiry rather than achievement, Expl exploration rather than correctness, and so on and so on. So it's a mixture. People change out of a mixture of pressure and support. And those are, your two, those are the two roles. So that observation, peer observation amongst teachers in the school, encouraging that development by teachers watching teachers, giving feedback, making suggestions, taking ideas back to your own year group or your own faculty from what you've seen in a different group and saying, oh, how are we going to play with that in the modern languages department or the drama department or whatever, fermenting that, really marking clearly the difference between that activity, which is about peer learning, and anything which is to do with judgment or appraisal. Uh, if you muddle those up, you're lost because people don't experiment when they're being judged, do they? People are not in learning mode, they're in performing mode. Supporting the development of this community of inquiry through all kinds of possibilities. Uh, we've, my mate Bill and I, have developed recently something called the Expansive Education Network. And it's a club, an online club, for schools and teachers who want not only to benefit from ideas about how to develop a learning powered school or an expansive education school but schools that are, that are up to the point where they now actively want to contribute to that database right so everybody wants to do little projects and try this and see what happened and write it up a little bit and put it up on the website and play with other schools in order to try and bootstrap the development of that database They're involving students more and more as your eyes and ears, as your co-researchers in the school. How could we have improved that? How many questions did students ask in this lesson? How could your students help you, how could they help to give you feedback about your small experiments so that they're on your side? You're becoming more and more transparent about your own uh, imaginativeness as you construct lessons. Monitoring your progress is a really tricky one. And we have another process which is described in the book called The Learning Review, which is just really getting a good look at your school from the point of view of the learning habits that the students are using. Uh, and that's a really useful launch pad uh, and, in, and sporadic checker of what your pro progress is. But have a look in the book for that. And of course, getting your parents on side is maybe, a, as I've already said, a long, kind of a long-term project. Some will jump on quickly, some will be more reluctant, some will be very hard to reach, maybe, depending on what type of school you teach in. But getting their buy-in is really important, and that brings us back to the language again.